Hi everyone, how's it going? Today I've decided to read a story to you. It's called, If You Give a Moose a Muffin. This is a story that's incredibly popular all throughout the United States. It exists in probably every elementary school that you go into, or if you went into an elementary school. And it's also wonderful for parents who want to read bedtime stories to their children. I remember my parents reading this story to me when I was a kid. So now I'm going to read it to you, but I'm also going to do something else. I'm going to describe the pictures on each page using phrasal verbs. And I think this is very useful because it's my favorite way of learning, you know, things that are complicated. It's by combining pictures with descriptions. So listen carefully, take notes if you need to, and if you have any questions, please let me know at the end. If you give a moose a muffin, right? So if you give a moose a muffin by Laura Joff Numeroff, illustrated by Felicia Bond. Okay, so this is a story that I absolutely love. In the picture on the front cover, you see a moose, moose with big antlers. This is a popular animal in Canada and northern countries. In his, on his hooves, you see three muffins, okay? And the muffins are steaming. This is not smoke coming from the muffins. Steam is what comes from hot materials or possibly from water, right? So it's clean, unlike smoke, which is not clean. And we say hooves because hooves are the hard feet of animals. Paws, dogs and cats might have paws, whereas moose, horses, cows, and pigs have hooves, okay? So, in this picture, we can see a few things. So we see a moose who is looking at the boy and the boy is sticking his head out of a window and throwing a muffin to the moose. If you give a moose a muffin, he'll want some jam to go with it. In this picture, we can see the moose walking through the doors and looking at the little boy. The little boy is sitting on the counter and staring at the moose in awe. It seems that the boy has been baking. We can see a muffin tin on the counter, and we see maybe some flour and some measuring spoons on the chair. So you'll bring out some of your mother's homemade blackberry jam. In this picture, the moose is holding the door open while the boy takes the jam out. He's also taking out other ingredients or other food items. I can see a, head, a head of lettuce and a bag of bread. And it seems during this, like during this process, some items have fallen on the floor. We can also see some pictures on this fridge. They're hanging on the fridge. There's a key hanging on the fridge as well as a pencil and looks like some note. When he's finished eating the muffin, he'll want another and another. So in the first picture, we can see the moose scarfing up a muffin. Scarfing means to eat very quickly because you're very hungry. And the boy is holding the muffins away from the moose because he doesn't want the moose to eat the rest of them. And another. In the picture on the bottom, we see the boy putting jam on the muffin. And another. When they're all gone, he'll ask you to make more. In this picture, we see the moose wiping his face off with a rag or with a towel. He's holding the muffin pans in his hand, or well, maybe one muffin pan, and he's crossing his legs. The boy is also looking at him, probably wondering, oh, why did I let this moose come into my house? 
You'll have to go to the store to get some muffin mix. He'll want to go with you. In the picture on the top, the boy's putting on his sweater. It's possible to say he's put his sweater on, or he's putting his sweater on, or he's putting on his sweater. Both work. We can also say that for the opposite, he's taking his sweater off, right? Or he's taking off his sweater. He'll want to go with you. The moose is now looking at the boy and the boy is looking at the moose. They are looking at each other and the moose is holding a little coin purse. Now he opens the window up and sticks his head out. When he opens the door and feels how chilly it is, he'll ask to borrow a sweater. When he puts the sweater on, he'll notice one of the buttons is loose. He'll ask for a needle and thread. We can see the moose is putting on a sweater in this picture. And you can see at the very bottom of the sweater, there's a loose button. He'll start sewing. The button will remind him of the puppets his grandmother used to make. So while the moose is sewing, the boy is holding the scissors and the thread for him. And he is looking at the vase that the moose knocked over. Okay, so the vase, <laughs> the vase was clearly knocked over because we can see the water and the flowers falling onto the floor. So we'll ask for some old socks. The moose is looking at the boy as he runs up the stairs and he's putting a flower into his, uh, into his sweater. He'll make sock puppets. In this picture, we see the moose cutting up some socks. Okay, we can also say he's cutting socks. Lots of times we just add up or some other prepositions to make it a little bit more fun. He's cutting up some socks, okay? When they're done, he'll want to put on a puppet show. Okay? To put on in this context means to perform. I can say, I put on a performance for my parents. I put on a show. This is very common, but he actually literally put them on his hands, as you can see in this picture, okay? Now, he'll need some, cardboard and paints. The moose is laying down some newspaper and the boy is running with cardboard and paints. Then he'll ask you to help make the scenery. The boy is standing on one foot and painting the scenery. He's painting the scenery with a paintbrush and paint. And the moose is throwing a bottle of paint towards him. So it looks like in this picture the moose is starting to help. Looks like he's also kind of painting the wall. <laughs> so when the scenery is finished he'll get behind the couch but his antlers will stick out. Now stick out we used previously. The moose stuck his head out of the window and the boy stuck his head out of the window in the very beginning. So to stick out can also mean to be a parent. Like, for example, in Brazil, I stick out. Like, I'm very noticeable, right? Um, so that means I'm on the street, and if I stick out, maybe people can see me from far away. I look different. It can also mean to protrude. In other words, it's very visible, right? So we see his antlers sticking out from behind the couch. So we'll ask for something to cover them up. To cover something up. We can also just say to cover them, right? The up is not necessary here, but it makes it a little bit more fun. You'll bring him a sheet from your bed. When he sees the sheet, He'll remember he wants to be a ghost for Halloween. He'll try it on and shout. In this picture, we see the moose shaking out a sheet. 
boo. It'll scare him so much, he'll knock over the paints. So just as he knocked over the vase before when he was sewing the button back on the sweater, he also knocked over the paints. Okay, so in this picture we see the moose covered up by the blanket and the paints are, have spilled all over the ground. So he'll use the sheet to clean up the mess, right? To clean up, another way to say just clean. Mm -hmm. Very common. Then he'll ask for some soap to wash it out. To wash something out means really to eliminate. So for example, if I have a spot on my t-shirt, I might use soap and water to wash the stain or to wash the spot out. And this means to eliminate that spot. Okay, so both of them are holding the dirty, well, the dirty objects here that are covered in paint. He'll probably want to hang the sheet up to dry. Now I could say he'll probably want to hang up the sheet to dry, although it doesn't sound as good as hang the sheet up to dry. Now I recommend separating these, just as it is in this sentence. And he's shaking the sheet out, once again, he's shaking the water out, and he's probably going to go outside to hang it up. Let's see, he'll go outside to put it on the clothesline. When he's out in the yard, he'll see your mother's blackberry bushes. So we see him walking out with the sheet and, he, and the mother on the right is raking the yard and putting leaves into the bags. Seeing the blackberries will remind him of her jam. He looks elated in this picture. He's very excited thinking about this jam and the muffins. And as you can see in the background, the boy has his hand over his face. He knows what's next. He'll probably ask you for some. So now the moose is running back into the house. And chances are, okay, so he's running with all the objects and materials. If you give him the jam, he'll want a muffin to go with it. All right. So that's the end of the story. You know, we end off with the mother walking in, watching the boy run with the jam over to the moose. And both of them are sitting on the ground, enjoying each other's company, it looks like. I don't think I would enjoy this moose if he was in my presence. He seems quite uh, demanding. Um, what do you think? Would you, would you be happy to have a moose like this in your house? Let me know. All right, so that's the end of the story. If you have any questions about the phrasal verbs, please let me know. If you have any questions about the way I describe the story and the pictures, also let me know. If you have any recommendations, please feel free to write below the video, okay? Have a nice rest of your day and practice those phrasal verbs. Bye.